Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's live broadcast, the interplay of Kinase Broad Profiling and Phenotypic Screening. I am Christina Mahalik of LabRoots.com, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. We are delighted to bring you this educational web seminar presented by LabRoots.com and sponsored by DiscoverX. DiscoverX Corporation, headquartered in Fremont, California, is a leader in design, manufacture, and sale of biochemical and cell-based assays for the drug discovery and life science markets. For Kinase Drug Discovery, DiscoverX offers the largest collection of nearly 500 biochemical and cell-based kinase assays. Genome Scan, DiscoverX's novel kinase inhibitor binding platform includes an industry-leading set of kinase assays that allow rapid determination of genome-wide compound potency and selectivity. Genome scan, together with DiscoverX cell-based services, can be applied to all stages of drug discovery and are ideal for identifying potent and selected inhibitors. You can learn more at discoverX.com. Uh, we have a few important announcements before we begin today. This is a web uh, webcast. It is designed to be interactive, and we encourage you to ask questions during the event. You can do this by submitting your questions by typing them in the Q&A box, which can be found by clicking on the green Q&A button at the lower left of the presentation window. We'll try to answer as many questions as we can today. Additionally, you can enlarge the slide window by clicking on the screen icon in the lower right-hand corner of the slide window. And if uh, you have any technical problems uh, hearing or viewing this presentation, please click on the support button at the top right of your presentation window or submit your problem through the green Q&A button located in the lower left of the window. This is an educational web seminar and thus offers free continuing education credits. After the webinar is over, please click on the CE button located in the bottom left-hand corner of your web page and follow the process of obtaining your credits. Now I would like to introduce today's speaker. Edgar Jacoby, PhD Senior Principal Scientist in Computational Chemistry, Janssen Research and Development. Edgar Jacoby holds a license in Sciences Chimique from Louvain and a Dr. Rira Naturalium in Computational Chemistry from the RWTH Aachen. After both postdoctoral work in molecular biophysics, at Harvard Medical School and the University of Chicago. He joined uh, Servier in 1995 as Cadre de Rougere in molecular uh, modeling. In 1999, he joined the Combinatorial Chemistry Group at Novartis Central Technologies as lab head for the in silico design of combinatorial compound libraries. From 2002 to 2012, he led the Molecular and Library Informatics Group from the Novartis Center for Chemistry in Basel. In 2013, he joined Janssen Research and, develop, uh, and Development in Baird as Senior Principal Scientist in Computational Chemistry. I will now turn it over to Dr. Jacoby for his presentation. Dr. Jacoby, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Kristana, for the kind introduction and invitation to speak at this seminar. So, you know, kinases have been the last decade most, uh, the most successful targets with sales around $250 billion over the last five years and have been approached by target family discovery methodologies. Here I will speak about three projects in the area of interplay of kinase profiling and phenotypic screening. So project one uh, will provide detail on the Janssen Kinase Inhibitor Broad Profiling Project, which is integral part of the Janssen Kinase Drug Discovery Strategy. Project two is on phenotypic screening activities of our potent and selective kinase inhibitor set we did from 2014 to 2016 in collaboration with Dundee University. 
and project three is about work done in, within the European IMI Open Facts Consortium where we showed how a semantically integrated data platform is useful for annotation of phenotypic hit compounds. So now I have to change. Uh, so kinase inner beta pro broad profiling is part of the Janssen kinase drug discovery strategy. Motivation for the projects were that kinase inhibitor broad profiling would enable us to capitalize on existing chemical assets, to identify hits for new projects, to identify probe compounds for target identification and validation, to prioritize biochemical versus cell-based assay development, and to link to chemogenomic and system-based approaches. At the beginning of the kinase inhibitor broad profiling project, we had to answer two key questions. First question was which compound profiling platform to select. There are a number of possibilities here which are outlined in this slide. Uh, they differ by the number of kinases covered, the assay type format, cell-based versus biochemical, the construct type, or the ATP concentration used in the assay. So we selected DiscoverX Kinome Scan platform, which has broad coverage, including mutants. Kinome Scan is a competitive binding assay which allows the determination of KDs after chain proof of correction. The assay uses affinity beads to immobilize DNA target kinases, which are displaced by the test compound in a dose-dependent manner. The kinase concentration is then dosed using qPCR reaction. The assay allows some multiplexing and is available for more than 400 wild-type kinases and mutants. The second key question was about the selection of the compounds. Which compounds should we profile? So Janssen has around 77,000 kinase inhibitor compounds which were synthesized within 40 internal kinase projects or from kinase-focused library enhancement projects. A medicinal chemistry guided selection was done for 3,000 compounds in addition to include selections from cheminformatics based approaches. Prior to the project, we had profiled around 8,000 compounds in DiscoverX and Millipore assays so that after the completion of the project, we had broad profiling data for around 11,000 compounds. The chemical structure diversity of the 3,000 11,000 and 77,000 sets are shown in the stochastic proximity embedding map shown in the slide. The 3,000 compound set covers the chemical space broadly, and there are some areas, clusters, which are more densely populated. Having available the full matrix of 3,369 compounds and 396 wild-type kinases with displacement efficacy values determined in single-point measurements at one micromolar compound concentration, a first type of analysis was about the kinase space covered with potent and selective inhibitors. Using the activity vector of a given compound, one can calculate the S65 selectivity measure, which is the number of kinases the compound hits with displacement efficacy greater than 65% divided by the total number of kinases tested. The S65 value gives the fraction of the hit kinome in approximation. We defined that a given compound covers a kinase if it hits the kinase with displacement efficacy greater than 95% and has an X65 value below the threshold of 2.5 5 and 10 percent respectively. These are the three curves you see in this plot. The plot shows the kinase coverage independence of the fraction of the kinase library screened. Doing this, we observe three things. The coverage allows isomptotic dependence on the compound library size. The coverage is higher with less selective compounds, S65 equals 10% is the top curve. And for S65 equals 5%, one levels off around 275 kinases with the full 3,000 compound set. And further extension rate is around 20 to 30 kinases with 1,000 compounds.
In the next step, we had to select the compounds for the confirmation KD determination round. To this aim, we selected around 3,500 compound kinase interactions for KD determination. Obviously, we wanted to focus on the most potent and selective compounds and also impact discovery projects of immediate interest. From the 3,500 dose response curve, we observe a 51% confirmation rate. Grouping the data in selectivity and efficacy bins, as shown in the table, allows a number of insights. As expected, compounds with higher primary displacement efficacy have higher confirmation rates. Vertical reading for each selectivity bin. To our surprise, we observed that more promiscuous compounds have a higher confirmation rate. Horizontal reading of the table. The most selective compounds confirm poorly. To understand this, we know that the false positive rate of a typical kinome scan assay is around 1 to 2 percent. That is, if one screens DMSO in single concentration experiments, one expects to hit up to 10 kinases. We then selected, based on the 11,000 compounds we had screened uh, in all our assays, the potent and selective inhibitors and analyze the kinase coverage using both IC50 data for the millipore data and KD data for the DiscoverX data. Doing this, we have 434 compounds with IC50 slash KDs below 10 nanomolar and S65 below 5%, which cover 129 kinases. Relaxing the potency criteria to 100 nanomolar, we find that we have 1,257 compounds with IC50 KD below 100 nanomolar and S65 below 5%, which cover 257 kinases. We see that we cover the kinome trees quite uniformly, and with 100 nanomolar compounds, we cover branches not covered before in the 10 nanomolar tree. In the next step, we compared the kinase covered by the Janssen compounds to the kinase covered in the hydrogen sertanti kinase knowledge base, which lists published and patented kinase inhibitors. In total, there are 331 kinases which can be considered to be covered. There are 96 kinases which uniquely are covered by the Janssen set, and this underlines the added value of the profiling experiment. This slide shows how the Janssen kinase inhibitor pro profiling project positively impacted in the last two years discovery project teams. The impact has, for instance, been seen in the identification of potential chemical starting points, the confirmation of HD assets, the delivery of two compounds for assays, the prioritization of compounds for HDS based on selectivity, the prioritization of assay formats for HDS, the validation slash devalidation of targets, the generation of ideas for covalent design, and the initiation of new projects. So this work has been summarized in a drug discovery today feature article, which you can read to find out more detail. The next project I will report on is on the phenotypic screening of our kinase inhibitor set we did with the Dundee DSTT consortium. We screened our selective and potent kinase inhibitor set on typical phenotypic assays running in Dundee DSTT biology labs, and one assay in collaboration with Greg Findlay will be highlighted. The assay is exploring the control of embryonic stem cell pluripotency. The principle of the assay illustrated in the following slide. Naive and prime pluripotency stem cells are in a dynamic equilibrium, which can be switched to the one or other side using inhibitors of specific kinases. For each state, expression markers are identified. The naive red state is marked by NANOC and KFLA4 proteins. The prime blue state is marked by the DNMT3B protein. FGFR activity 
switches naive state to the primed state. FGFR inhibitors thus shift the equilibrium to the naive red state. Vice versa, JAK activity switches the primed state to the naive state. JAK inhibitors accordingly shift the equilibrium to the primed blue state. The objective of the kinase inhibitor screening is to identify new kinases which potentially direct the equilibrium to the one or other side. To analyze the results, we wanted to emphasize the usage of the primary profiling data we have generated with the broad profiling experiment. In the signature analysis outlined here, the primary data matrix is binarized according to an activity threshold, zero meaning inactive, below the threshold, one meaning active, above the threshold. In the next step, the number of active compounds are counted for each kinase. The kinases with the highest number of hits are suggested as hits in the, in the assignment of the kinase for the phenotypic screen. We now have in place more sophisticated protocols which analyze the enrichment of the hits versus the baseline of all compounds, including the inactives. The results are comparable but are not shown here. Here are the results of the signature analyses for hits identifying to drive the naive state. Both the Discover X and Millipore matrices were analyzed by signature analysis separately. According to the analysis, hits driving the naive state, red states are FGFR, FLIT4, and FLIT1, or red inhibitors. Hits driving the primed blue state are inhibitors of MELK or FLIT3. These kinases are now recommended for further experiments using, for instance, CRISPR-Cas9 validation experiments. The next slide illustrates potential application of the stemless biology. Potential applications in the cancer fields are to evaluate the relevance of naive versus primate and differentiated states, or in the regenerative medicine field, the ex vivo reprogramming of stem cells followed by directed differentiations towards specialized cell types with potential applications in Alzheimer's, diabetes, or cancer. In the last part of my talk, I will show a few computational protocols for phenotypic hit annotation and in situ target deconvolution, which were developed within the European IMI Open Facts Consortium. The IMI Open Facts Consortium ran from 2011 to 2016 and had the aim to explore the capabilities of semantic web-based discovery platform using open data. The headline of the here presented protocols is knowing the nouns about the hits which come out of phenotypic screen. Protocol 1 provides the KB Campbell annotations and classification of hit lists. Protocol 2 provides the GO annotation, the genome ontology annotation, for the proteins for which interactions are known based on Protocol 1. Protocol 3 provides the Wiki Pathways annotations for the proteins. Protocol 4 provides the link to disease and possible side effects for the proteins which are hit. And Protocol 5 provides a correlation between phenotypic and biochemical screening data. Protocol 6 identifies the compound toolbox to validate, devalidate, identified potential targets of Protocol 1 based on the IUFAR reference database. Such annotation capabilities are made possible by the semantic integration among key data concepts which were integrated in open facts. Using the Campbell data, the known compound target interactions are identified. The compound data is directly linked to the compound classification data in CABI, and the target data is directly linked to GO, pathway, and disease data, and the Campbell target classification. The next slide illustrates the correlation robot protocol implemented in Pipeline Pilot data pipelining software from Biovia in more detail. Pipeline Pilot allows the seamless access to the OpenFacts API codes. 
the essential pilot nodes corresponding to the API calls have been programmed in the project. What you see here in step one, top data stream, all kinases from the kinase Campbell kinase tree are pulled using the target class member list call. In step two, second line, the assay data for the example prelamine A splicing corrector assay is pulled using the target pharmacology list call. In step three, we pull for each kinase of the kinase tree the available pharmacology data using the target pharmacology list call, and step four does the correlation itself. In the shown example, we do the most simple correlation type by just counting the number of hits common to an assay pair. Here, more complex correlation functions can be used when the data is less sparse, like, for instance, corporate screening data of full HDS disks. Slide 18 shows the protocol to assemble a toolbox of known reference compounds for the annotated targets interacting with the phenotypic hit compounds. Step one reads the IUFA compound target interaction file. The IUFA database is a database of reference compounds which are well studied in pharmacology and integrates also compounds from the SGC Structural Genomics Probe Initiative. Step two gets for each annotated target the Uniprot ID of the target using the target information call. Step three does then the joining based on Uniprot ID. The following steps are generating the output format. The result is a list of compounds with linked targets which can be tested in the phenotypic screen. This work also has been published in the 2016 MET communication paper, which summarized the work done in the Open Facts Consortium on in situ target validation and phenotypic screening by demonstrating the application of the protocols on the prelaming A splicing corrector assay. I wish to summarize the seminar with a few conclusion statements. Biochemical profiling of existing proprietary kinase inhibitors allow to jumpstart new projects and to impact project decisions. Second, the Janssen's approach, the world is the laboratory, allows to capitalize on our asset in a fast-changing scientific environment, as seen both in the Kinome scan and the DSTT projects. And third, the Open Facts platform delivered useful computational protocols for phenotypic screening in data analyses. Finally, I wish to acknowledge a number of colleagues who helped in this project, which are shown here on the acknowledgement slide. Thank you much for your attention. Well, thank you so much uh, for that informative presentation, Dr. Jacoby. Before we get started on the question and answer session, I would like to remind our audience how to submit questions. You can submit questions by typing them in the Q&A box, which can be found by clicking on the green Q&A button at the lower left of the presentation window. Once again, we'll try to answer as many questions as we can. Excellent. All right. Well, let's get started with our first question for the day. Um, let's see. Dr. Jacoby, how is kinase drug discovery evolving in the industry? Yeah, so I said initially that uh, kinases have been in the last 10 years among the most successful targets, and there were uh, very big initiatives in industry, platforms, uh, kinase platforms, and a number of companies where systematically the members of the kinase family were explored. This has changed in the last two or three years to a situation where we go less systematically uh, but very selectively pick kinases for which we have disease-relevant information and then screen these and do drug discovery with these. So uh, in the last 10 years, uh, I think uh, after GPCRs, kinases are the most successful target family and uh, it continues to be of importance. 
Excellent. Thank you for that answer. Um, we'll be moving on to our second question. And uh, this question asks, the Open Facts Project was completed in 2016. How does the sustainability plan look like? Yeah, so the Open Facts Consortium was a project sponsored by the IMI initiative in Europe. And uh, after the completion of the project, the uh, Open Facts Foundation took over to uh, continue the activity. So this is a foundation sponsored by companies and uh, which uh, has a plan to sustain uh, the sustainability, to guarantee the sustainability of the infrastructure which is developed, which was developed in the project. Um, now you have to see that a number of startup companies have started to rebuild also the uh, platform which was uh, initially provided by Open Facts. Uh, there are companies like Oretos, for example, who have systematically expanded the data integration and providing now these services. Excellent. Thank you for that. Um, our uh, third question is, uh, would the broad profiling screen be beneficial to smaller set of compounds, such as a subset of a library to annotate the library? And if so, how would you choose the compound? Yeah, so typically, uh, so what we have done here, we have really tried to map the entire chemical space we have available for kinases. And, uh, but we do also in projects, in specific kinase projects, do uh, selectivity profiling. Here we talk about uh, to select sets of 200 to 300 compounds, and then we go uh, applying medicinal chemistry selection rules, which are really based on selecting the more interesting compounds from the medicinal chemistry side, meaning compounds which uh, have good solubility, good permeation, and good exposure values. Uh, and then we want to know what is the selectivity of these compounds. So this is the application in projects, uh, which was also mentioned in the beginning by the introduction. OK, thank you so much for that. Um, our next question asks, as described that maize inhibitor can have potential application in treating diseases like cancer. Please explain more about it. Yeah, so kinases uh, are indeed targets in oncology, and, and uh, um, it's the main application domain of uh, kinase inhibitors. Uh, there are some indications also in immunological diseases. So kinases play very important roles as modulator and signal transduction pathways. And this explains why they are so prominent and why uh, they influence, indeed, uh, disease biology. Um, initially, people thought that kinases would not be good targets because of the selectivity. Uh, but then it was shown that, indeed, it is possible to design very selective compounds. Uh, and this then made it uh, to this uh, importance in, in drug discovery. Excellent. Thank you uh, so much for that information, Dr. Jacoby. Um, in conclusion, it doesn't look like we have any more questions for the day. Uh, do you have any closing comments that you would like to leave with our audience? Yeah, I think in phenotypic screening, and, uh, which is uh, probably the, the new wave of doing drug discovery, the new old wave of doing drug discovery, it's very important to have characterized compounds which we can get with this profiling and also to have informatics tools to, uh, to annotate uh, the knowledge which we have uh, to these compounds and then uh, be able to have much faster target identification validation experiments uh, than we had done before. So I think these platforms together with information technology is very important uh, for phenotypic uh, screening. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Dr. Jacoby. I would like to thank you once again. And I'd also like to thank our sponsor, DiscoverX, for making today's educational webcast possible. 
Today's webcast will be available for uh, on-demand viewing through June uh, 2017. You will receive an email from LabRoot alerting you of when this webcast will be available for replay. We invite you, we encourage you to forward that announcement to your colleagues who may have missed today's uh, live event. This is Christina from LabRoots.com. We hope to see you here again soon. Thank you and have a great day. Goodbye.